Good morning and welcome to Trinity on the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. Would you join me for worship by turning to page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Kneeling, let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in your Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old person who does not live at a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Canticle 9. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold 
and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among his peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from 2 Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When some were speaking about the temple 
how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God. Jesus said, As for these things you will see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go for after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. And he said to them, Nothing will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famine and plagues, and there will be dreadful potent and great signs from heaven. But before all these occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogue and prisoners, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you the words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will be perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be pleasing to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning. So glad you're joining us on the virtual service today as we celebrate Pentecost 23. We're rounding the basis of finishing up the liturgical calendar. It's hard to believe Advent is just around the corner. But we are getting close to that season in the year where we pause, we prepare, we get ourselves ready for the greatest day the world has ever known, the day Jesus was born. That's right, that's just around the corner. But for the next couple of weeks, last week we had All Saints Sunday, this week, we are three weeks away from Advent, and we see Jesus beginning to come to an end of his ministry as that calendar comes full circle. And in our gospel passage today, he talks a lot about persecution, he talks a lot about what it's going to be like if you follow him. And he's, in a way, getting his disciples ready. He is about to make his way back to heaven and he wants his disciples, his apostles, those who follow him to know it's not going to be an easy road. It's not going to be the best life ever, if you will. This is not going to make them rich or popular or the most successful guy in town. Actually, quite the opposite. Because the way of Jesus is not the way to glory. It's actually a downward trajectory a downward spiral, if you will. And yet, that's not how it's always going to be. And Jesus is really clear also in the gospel that in this life you will have trouble, but take heart, I'm going to overcome the world. So yes, in this life, you're going to have troubles. That's why we see troubles happening in our world. We see crazy wars taking place in Russia, Ukraine. We see North Korea throwing missiles at an alarming rate. We see China gearing up to become a world power. We see all this flex in this world trying so hard to climb the glory road upwards to become God. And so Jesus is telling his disciples in our passage today, because the world was no different then, the world has not gotten worse or better. It's what it is. It's spinning out of control, literally. And so he says, go and tell people about me, but be ready. They're going to hate you. They're not going to like you. They're going to despise you. 
Have you ever seen persecution? Have you ever been persecuted? I haven't really, and probably you haven't. Living in America here in the West, we don't see it all that much. But if you travel the world, you'll definitely see it. By the time you watch this video, I will have just returned from Africa, spending time there in Uganda with an NGO that I um, started many years ago, 15 plus years ago. And we started it because of the injustice, because of the persecution, if you will, of a group of people that would blow your mind. That group of people are children. You see, if you're a child in Uganda, it's illegal to be an orphan. And yet, as a child, you have no choice if you're an orphan. You have no choice if your parents are killed. You have no choice if you're left alone. You have no choice if your family abandons you, but yet, it's illegal. And so they put children in prison to get them off the streets. And so about 15 years ago, I was there with a group of guys. We were working in one of these prisons, and it was full of children, and we asked the simple question, why are there so many kids? And that's when we learned this horrible, horrible persecution of kids. And so we started this organization where we worked very hard to get these kids out, to find homes if we could, family members, distant family members, and many times, you know what we'd find out? That an aunt or uncle would be happy to take them, but they can't afford it. And so for a small $5 a month, they would be willing to take the child into their home so they're no longer an orphan. It's crazy. In other situations, we couldn't find families. And so we did the next best thing. We made a partnership with the Church of Uganda and found foster families within the church, Christian homes for these kids to be brought up in. And those Christian homes would get the same $5 a month stipend to help take care of these kids. We also partnered with the Anglican Church to allow school-age children to go to the boarding schools and the Anglican schools that were all over the country. And if any of them needed medical treatment, we had a partnership with the Anglican hospitals in Uganda to treat them for free. It's a wonderful group. I uh, love the ministry and still have a real deep connection because about 15 years ago, what got this all started was a young boy named Tony who was two years old had been brought into the prison a week before I arrived because they found him sitting next to his mother who had died of AIDS. And so traumatized, alone, isolated, scared to death, two-year-old Tony was sitting off in the corner. And by day two, day three, he was coming to me. By day four, he wouldn't let me go. And I called Jan and said, I'm not leaving him here. And we began the process to try to adopt this boy. And we made it as far as we could. We had to tap out because the government wanted an over $250,000, $300,000 bribe for us to leave the country with him. So Tony is still our boy. He's 16 years old now. We have him in a British boarding school in Uganda. We have a lady named Ruth who is his nanny and takes care of him. And we fund all their stuff and take care of him. He's our kid. We just can't bring him home. And he lives there in country. And so we haven't seen him in over two years because of COVID. So Jan and I had the privilege of going and spending time with him. I'll, I'll tell you next week how it went. <laughs> this week I haven't gone yet, but we leave today. And so I would ask you to pray for us for our travels, but by the time you see this, it'll have already happened. But that's a picture of persecution to an of a group of people that don't really deserve it. I've seen persecution in Romania before coming into parish ministry. I worked for a nonprofit in Eastern Europe out of Budapest, Hungary, and worked all over those countries surrounding Bu uh, Hungary, Romania, Slovakia, Hungary, Ukraine, Russia, Moldova, Serbia. And I remember being in Romania 25 plus years ago now and meeting people who were persecuted during Ceausescu's reign, who hated Christianity and closed all the churches and tried to burn all the Bibles. And there were some smugglers that would sneak out into Hungary or over to Austria and get Bibles and bring them in, smuggle them in. And those who were caught doing it would literally have their eyes plucked out. I met a man who had no eyes because the government plucked his eyes out for bringing Bibles into the country. If you got caught with a Bible in your home, you got severely persecuted. And so you know what the families would do? Because they didn't want the Bible to be completely burned. They would take it and they would divide it into the individual books. 
There would be the book of John and the book of Matthew and the book of Romans and the book of Psalms and the book of Proverbs. And they would put all these different individual books into the hands of the village people. And they would hide them in their homes. And they would read them at night to one another. And when they finished, they would trade the books around so that everybody could have a chance to have a piece of the Bible. Friends, that's persecution. And Jesus is preparing his disciples today in this lesson, but he also wants to prepare the church today, the church that I just spoke of. How is Jesus preparing you to love the persecuted church or to be the persecuted church? You know, as Christians, we have a responsibility to love our neighbor as ourself. And so if one person is hurting, we're all hurting. If the church in Uganda is hurting, we're all hurting. If the church in Romania is hurting, we're all hurting. If the underground churches of China are hurting, we're all hurting. So how is God, through these lessons, preparing us and using you to be an advocate for the persecuted church? It's one of the favorite things we pray every week when we do the prayers of the people. We pray for those being persecuted. That's why. It's not like it's gone away. We just don't see it. And so, friends, during this next couple of weeks, as we kind of get closer and closer to Advent, I'm going to ask you to begin maybe praying now for the persecuted church. Pray for those who suffer for being called a Christian. And then thank God that you are one of those who are blessed to be in the West. Yes, we're in a recession, maybe. Yes, life is a little bit hard. But it's not anything compared to how the world is struggling right now. So thank God for your blessings. Count them one by one. Amen. Well, now that we've been reminded of the good news of Jesus, let us stand and profess what we believe to be true through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of his Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In these last days, let us offer prayers to God for the endurance of all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all peoples and their leaders, and for justice and righteousness in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For good weather, abundant fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, travelers and refugees, prisoners and their families, and the dying. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <coughs> For those <coughs> who rest in Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone, especially those whom we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer for our village and those who live in it, and for our families and companions and all those we love, especially those named on our parish prayer list. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of righteousness, rising and burning like the sun, heal all those for whom we pray and write our names in the book of remembrance through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's greet each other in peace. <coughs> Good morning. So glad you watched our service on the virtual service. Welcome to Trinity. I hope you truly find a place to be here at Trinity. I wanted to give you a couple of announcements that are coming up. We're moving fast as we can towards the fall and into winter before we know it. We'll be in Advent and all the activities that come with that. So let me encourage you to keep an eye out on the e-genesis of all the different activities that will be taking place starting on the night before Thanksgiving all the way through December. Lots of things to be watching for, so keep your eyes open. You may also realize we are just coming on the tail end of our stewardship campaign this year. Our theme, as most of you have heard, is Trinity, there's a place for you. And I hope you realize there's a place even for you, even if you just watch this service online from wherever you might be. There's a place for you here, and we hope you feel warm and welcome here. If you have a prayer request that you would like us to know about, feel free to email us here at the church. You can follow the prompt here in the bottom of the screen, and I'll make sure to get that to our prayer ministers. Also wanted to uh, invite you. Perhaps you want to be a part of our stewardship campaign this year. You'll see there's a way that you can click in the bottom of the screen and follow the prompts and you can be a part of this year's stewardship campaign. Realizing it's not a matter of how much you give, it's a matter of how you give. Are you giving joyfully out of what God has given you? That's the way you give. Don't ever give because you feel like you have to or you've been shaken upside down. Give because you want to. Give because you find great joy and giving back to the ministries that love you and support you. Well, let's come to the table now, remembering that Jesus is our host, and he put all of himself out for free for you. He invites you to this virtual altar rail, just as you are, not as you should be. So come to the table, remembering Jesus is your host. <music>
All thanks come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mysteries of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. If you please join me for our post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now, may the peace of God be on each one of you this day, and until we meet again, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit, Alleluia, alleluia.